Welcome to the Dewatara Party Line Talk Show on KA1037. Arlene Gawanahawi Jacobs Yujats. I'll be your host for today. Uwawanizarade, MCK Ruaya Danadaktuhne. My guests are Rad, uh, Radijahayas Ras Montor, who is uh, going to be a bit late, uh, and Danu Lindsay Labarn. So, welcome, Lindsay. Yes, sir. How are you? Good. And yourself? I'm um, doing well. Good, good, good. Uh, well, I just wanted to let the uh, viewers uh, and the listeners, because this is being taped, uh, <laughs> videotaped, uh, Ross will be a little bit late. Uh, we have recently received remains of a a native person who died very, very long ago that whose remains were found on the other side of the river. Uh, nobody would know them today. I'm talking about hundreds of years ago, maybe, I don't know, maybe even longer. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've been in a museum all these years, and uh, we sort of have agreements now to have those uh, remains repatriated to here, mm -hmm. and we're interring them in Ganawage because since we used to roam this area, you know, for uh, thousands of years, I would imagine, uh, we just assumed, and they, the government assumed that they're, Ogwehue. Mohawk uh, yeah. remains. So oh, Mohawk remains, okay. Yep, so we want to give them a dignified uh, burial, and they're being interred back in town in one of our cemeteries. Actually, the one right across from the council office. Listen, I don't know all the where's and what for, so when Ross comes in, he could explain everything about it. I'm just, I just know those basic facts that the uh, remains have been repatriated to us. And as from what I understand, and Ross will... Uh, expound on that. We'll be having more as time goes by because there's a lot of remains in museums and uh, uh, you know in the off the reserve, obviously, and they've been there for years and years. And it's just not right that the uh, people that are ancestors, you know, be just in a shelf on a in, in a box uh, sure. in a museum. So he could he'll he'll explain everything <laughs> about that when he comes. Okay, um, so right now you have a survey on the Blue Collar Park. Yeah. Actually, I took it the other day. Oh, did you? It took less than five minutes. Wasn't there, I think there's only like six or seven There's about or six seven or seven qu questions. Yeah, there's not many questions. And, you know, there's a little space at the bottom if you want to add a Comments. comment, which, of course, I had a comment. Not, not you. No, of course not. <laughs> so it takes about five minutes or less, so <clears> I, I encourage uh, community members to take that survey and well, have your... Uh, you know. Arlene, I would encourage them to take it pretty quickly because it, I think at 1 o'clock it ends. Oh, really? Yeah. It, so it was only on for three, a week. four I, days? I think it was uh, just, it's been all week, I believe. Yeah. Anyway, but the thing is, because there's another survey question coming up, and they don't run two surveys at the same time. So when this survey will be done uh, at 1, uh, they'll move to another uh, survey. Okay, so people, you have about 45 minutes to answer the survey. It, it just takes... It, Three it does, minutes to yeah, do it. It takes less yeah. than five minutes. Yeah, I yeah. mean, unless you want to really wait for your answer at the end when you have a comment. And the like multiple, I did. Yeah. multiple choice question multiple is pretty choice. simple. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing is there's a kiosk. Is it today at the for about land purchases to yeah. gauge the community? Yeah. And is that at the uh, services complex? It's at the uh, Dewadoni Zakta, I believe. You know, the when you walk into that. Oh, where the post office is. Yeah, but not in the post office. You know, no, that, right. there's like a rotunda when you walk in. Yeah, yeah. And then the elevators, it's in there. Like I think the it's, entrance to Dewadoni Zakta. Correct. It's Gina, Deer, and uh, Clinton uh, are uh, there with that. Uh, but before we get, oh, did you want to ask something else? Because I didn't want to go too far from the blue collar thing. I wanted to talk. Yeah. About okay. Uh, just just a little bit on the land purchases. Yeah, yeah. What what does that mean? Land purchases for? Well, you know, of course, it's for land. It's but for for for, for common use. Correct. People okay. in town have been uh, coming forward. It seems more lately, you know, that uh, are want to sell the land back to the community for right. a simple reason. Then it goes back into the common. Eventually, you know, uh, people will build houses on it. When it keeps getting sold privately, we never get a chance to uh, to uh, return it to the common. So that's that's what we're looking at right now. And and are are these lands going to be used for, or you don't really know right now, depending on the location? I, I and guess size? Every, you know what everything has to do with location. I mean, sometimes yeah. you buy a piece of property that was uh, you know somewhere where it's a little bit more difficult to right. access. Right. And uh, 
So anyway, that, that, the whole idea is they're going to be gauging people's opinions on on the purchase of land, what we should use the land for. The, the, you know, when they go, if they go there and take the survey, uh, they'll they'll find out the exact uh, parameters of the survey, what they need to know. So welcome, Ross. Ross just joined us, and Happy New Year since the first time I'm seeing That's you. That's right. Happy New Year to you, Arnie. Even, even though it's almost the end of January, it's still a new year. It's still a new year. Why? Okay. If you're, depending on how you look at it, every day is a new year. That's right. If you if if you get up, you're you're okay. That's right. That's every right. day above. Ground this is what we learned day. today. <laughs> especially especially at our age, or my age, I should say. Okay, um, Lindsay, you were going to talk. A you know what? Bit more? Uh, Ross is here now. I don't want to take all this time, but I want to hit a few topics if Ross doesn't mind. There's, Not at there's all. a lot uh, of time. In case anybody noticed, and I don't know if it's still closed because it was supposed to be reopened at noon. The the the, the, the tunnel. The tunnel the tunnel was having some cables, uh, some uh, communication f- fiber cables. optic, I think, was yeah. being uh, installed. And it was supposed to be over at 12. I'm not sure if it's over. So if anybody's going out that way, maybe, you know, it'd be, don't be surprised if it's, uh, it's still closed. The other thing is there's a drone inspection of the Mercier Bridge that's been taking place since yesterday. And it'll go on till tomorrow. Uh, between 6 and 11.30 a.m. in the morning. So if you happen to see some guys and you think they're doing something wrong, they, they have authorization. They're flying the drones out of Tecaquita Island, and they're inspecting the north wall of the seaway, which is the other side of the river, right. the other side of the seaway from us, underneath the Mercier Bridge. Uh, can, you, can you explain to people who don't know what a drone is? Uh, well, everybody, I guess, has seen those little helicopter-type things that fly around. Uh, there's, they're always in the news now because somebody seems to be flying them near, near, near airports all the airports time. And, yeah. and uh, it just has a camera on it, and it gets to. it's much easier to get into places that you would have to get a lift or something to put a man in to go actually visually inspect something. So it, it makes it a little bit easier. They're used in all kinds of industries now for uh, for checking equipment and buildings and smokestacks and all kind of things like that. Mm-hmm. So if you see that, that that's an authorized thing. It's being done, and uh, you might be on take a quick. Pr- they might be gone now because it was supposed to be only till 11:30. But again, I don't know if they're you know they're they're done yet. But it's supposed to be from 6 to 11:30, and it'll be one more day. Tomorrow will be the last day. Uh, the last thing I'd like to touch on is uh, we were just talking earlier about the survey for the uh, the uh, Blue Collar Park. Yes. Uh, I, you know, I, you hear a couple of people are always asking, well, well, why, what's going on? I just wanted to point out that the, the town garage, which is uh, 43 years old now, was purchased. It was a prior building somewhere else. I, a lot of people don't know that. It was dismantled. It was brought here. I guess the price was uh, was a good price. So it wasn't actually, you know, we made it a garage. I'm not sure what it was in its prior life. So basically, we didn't build it from scratch. But now when we're gonna, we want to build the new uh, uh, town garage on the other side of the seaway, uh, the other side of the tunnel, it's going to be built specifically as a town garage, so everything will be where it needs to be. Like you know, the, you know how it is inside the garage. You were a well, of course, bus I worked driver there for, for eight a while. Years. It's kind of cramped. Yeah. It's uh, when the buses go in there, the, the offices in there, they get the fumes. The, the fumes. The air quality it, it's, it's, is very it's terrible. Uh, yeah, it's dangerous. And everything was just as an afterthought. They made offices right on the side, the left and the right when you walk in. Yeah. And it's all sort of haphazard. We want to try to do away with that, make it a little bit safer for our workers. Uh, the other thing was the uh, transfer depot. Uh, if everybody knows, it's all you got to drive all the way down to Seaway Road, almost to behind Survival School. Mm-hmm. That's going to be also there. So it's going to be really close to town. You don't have to drive so far out. You mean the transfer depot is going to move? It's going to move to... Oh, uh, I didn't t- know that. Yeah, okay. it's going to... Well, That's you good. know what the thing is, too? It's kind of dangerous. I know this might sound... Weird because well, maybe not. I don't know, but uh, you know, in our community, we all know each other. It's all people from the community. The guys that work there at times have been threatened, and they feel vulnerable because they're by themselves. You know, somebody goes there with something that's inappropriate to be disposed of, like threatened by community members. Yeah, and you know, and and oh, and then the guy, goodness. you know, the guy that there will say, "Well, no, you can't put that here." And they, you know, they go, "Yeah." 
well, you know, they, they get threatened. Yeah, I'm going to put it there if I'm going to walk in. This is my time. And, like, what are you going to do about it? Exactly. And, you know, <laughs> who, who wants to fight? You know, you're not there to fight. You're no, there to uh, make sure the recycling and the garbage is sorted right. Yeah. So, anyway, that's going to be moved closer into the uh, into this project. So, uh That'll uh, make it a little bit safer, I guess, and give uh, the men, uh, and, and I'm not sure if there's any women that work there. There might be. To make, give them a little more, sa- you know, a feel of safety that there are a lot of people around. And also, you know, when there's a lot of eyeballs around, sometimes people don't act a certain way. They'll act the way right. they know nobody's around to You're see right. yeah. what's going on. It's just, it's not just us. Everybody has that, uh, you know, everybody does that. Uh, the other thing is, I know I've heard a lot, what's the cost? It's approximately one and a half million dollars it's going to be the building. And uh, there'll be four garage bays rather than that one bay that you drive in. And uh, there'll be storage area there. Uh, will, will there be a bus wash? You know what? That's one thing I didn't ask. See, I knew when I came on, I said, Arlene worked at the top you know at the, so she would probably i figured you were going to ask me something and that's why i try to get all these things but i don't know but i will find out Be, we'll because find we out. used to have to drive the buses in the garage mm-hmm. and wash it in there and everything the dirt would go all over the place it's a big plus mess. you have the it was awful yeah. it was awful i, you I know mean what? Uh, especially in, in the winter you, you have to wash the buses. sure you got me on that one Arlene. but i will ask that question and uh if you, you have any other questions i'm that's pretty much what i just wanted to touch on those things so will there be offices in this building? There will be offices in there. But the capital unit will move there, and they'll have the offices upstairs. I, I, I think that's what people don't understand. It's not only public works and buses and all this. It's the whole capital unit that's going to be moving there also. Yeah. So they're going to move from in front of Cattery from, uh, School. the old nunnery. The, o- the old nunnery. Yeah. It was a clinic. It, what it, else it, was it? Uh, I don't know. The, I, I know a clinic and a nunnery. I don't know. What I know the nuns used to stay there. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was originally built uh, for the nuns. early in the ni- early 1960s. Yes, I remember. As the well, convent. For no, the I, nuns. I I'm not that old. I don't remember. That. I know you're a young lady. That's why I'm informing you. <laughs> no, I remember uh, that. Those are the only two things that I remember. And then the and then by the, the 70s clinic. it became a clinic. Clinic. Yeah. Yes. And then that was one of the first. Eventually, uh, the lands yeah. unit ends up being there. Yeah, yeah. the lands unit and capital. And capital. Yeah. So they shared the building. So now that'll be better for the lands unit. I guess. Well, you know, it would be good to have everybody sort of under one roof well, yeah. in those different uh, yeah. organizations. Yeah. So right now we have all these satellite offices everywhere. It also gets expensive because we have to heat and, you know, use lights. Well, you and have all to these heat, maintain buildings. all these exactly. buildings. Exactly. So, so, I mean, if you put it in one, one place, it's one better for shopping. the community. Yeah, one-stop shopping. I mean, it, it totally makes sense. And uh, the safety issue. Again, you've worked there. Yep. You know how busy it is there? Yes. You have people going to Dewadoni Zakta, to the bank, to the post office, well, in that well, little area. Well, well you know, the... Well, what I experienced as a bus driver, when you were backing out, you know, the people would park on the highway, I mean, not on the road, in the front, mm-hmm. on the river road, yeah. let their kids off, and their kids would run to the bus. And you, and you can't yeah, always see it's directly behind the bus. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have mirrors and whatever. But sure, but some, really, there's and, you know, always you a have blind the beep, spot. You know, there's beep, always beep, a blind beep, spot, beep, yeah. Whatever, and, you know, you, you'd look and you'd look and you'd pray that nobody's running. And we tell the kids, Don't stay on do the that, sidewalk right? until the bus pulls out. But, you out. know, kids are kids. They, they, they do it anyway. But anyway, so we, we hope to make it a little bit safer over there because you won't have the buses, you won't have the guys driving with the, the pickup trucks, you won't have all those heavy equipment going by there. So it cuts down one aspect of uh, traffic in that area. That's great. That's great. I, I hope people uh, realize that we certainly need that before. You we know, the thing need, is, uh, our community is growing, things. right? I mean, we need more room. We need you, everything. You know, We're not getting smaller. It's sort of like need and want. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people say, okay, well, we need this. And, well, I, maybe not. Maybe you want that, but we really need a building for public well, works 43, and it's capital. 40, like I said, 43 it's 43, years and old. it wasn't originally built for that. It was, we bought the building on, on a sale somewhere, I guess. What, was that the former um, Gunwalker Building Systems? You remember building the systems? building systems? Yeah, my, 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 my house was built there. Really? They, built them, they used to build them inside, inside? In, in, in two pieces. Or depending on how big the house was, three pieces. Yeah. They'd truck it out to the site and they'd uh, bolt them together. Really, that's how they would do it. Wow. So you're you're not only getting another building, you're getting a history lesson. There you go. I there like that. 
Well, that's that's it for me. I'm going to let Ross uh, okay, we, pick we're up gonna, the baton. Well, we're going to go to commercial first. Sure. And anyway, it's been a pleasure. We will start again. All right. Anna. And we are back. Uh, Lindsay LeBarn had to leave, so we'll have Ross Montour for the rest of the show. Um, I was asking them questions about, um, you know, their, while Lindsay was updating on the land's portfolio and when he was doing Blue Collar Park and so on. So the for the next half, I'm going to be asking Ross Montour, uh, it's halfway into their term, what they're, what they're working on now and what does he hope to accomplish before the end of this term. So, Ross, welcome back. Welcome. Uh, it's good to be back. Um, it's been a while, actually, since I've been on. Um, you were on my first show November 1st. <clears throat> November. It's been that long. When the uh, power was off. Wait. That's not actually working that no, good. No, So we'll, we'll, we'll make do. It's all okay. right. It, it keeps cutting out. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's been actually since uh, November, uh, since I was last on. And... Um, so today, as it just turns out, I was I was listening on the way in. I expected to be on about 15 minutes into it uh, and not from the beginning. Uh, but I just want to start out. I'll start out with the archaeo the archaeology file since uh, I was dealing with a uh, with the matter this morning. For uh, sure, the, yes. Uh, we had the uh, Rusion Museum, which is in La Prairie, um, had in its possession uh, uh, the remains of uh, of uh, a little girl. Uh, and an, an older girl, uh, and uh, and they had them there for for quite a number of years. Um, so we we had worked out an agreement with them uh, to allow us to uh, bring those girls to Ganawage for a reinterment here. Uh, they don't uh, they don't belong at nobody's um, remains should be on a shelf in a museum. Uh, at any place, and that's our that's our view in terms of archaeology. So, where did the remains come from? The, actually, the remains, as far as I know, Arlene, were were actually discovered, uncovered, in uh, La Prairie. So they were they were uh, remains that were in this area, uh, and uh, they are, um, as Lindsay did point out, uh, um, uh, quite old. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and I would say, like he he uh, mentioned that uh, there was uh, you know an acknowledgement that they were they were Mohawk. In fact, in Quebec, there is no such acknowledgement, and that's part of the problem that we have with them. You know, they, they they will say, well, we don't know what the language they spoke. To them, I have said, uh, well, we know what language they didn't speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, but they are they are indigenous ancestral remains. They could be our ancestors. It could be a it could be your family ancestor. I mean, we uh, populated this whole area. Of course. And uh, so, uh, but the, but the point is, is that um, we hold it. We have a responsibility to take care of those remains and, and see that they're they're treated uh, in the way with, that they ought to be with with respect. With respect. Uh, and as I said at the beginning, the uh, the issue is they don't belong in boxes and they don't belong in uh, in museums or in storage uh, facilities. And in Quebec, what you have, uh, what complicates things uh, from my perspective is that you have, number one, you have um, uh, an academic view. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and you know, you've been on council mm-hmm. before. I'm sure you heard that Quebec takes the position that they were here before we were. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean... They consider Mohawks to be uh, refugees from the Mohawk Valley and that these other Iroquois we, here were... We were immigrants. Yes, we were immigrants and they were here prior to us and that the people that were here, they may have been Iroquois, but they're St. Lawrence Iroquois and they're not the same people. And my view is like, who are you to say? Of course. It isn't for you to say. Yeah. Um, and so they hold it, uh, that there's a, there's a view that all along the river, the St. Lawrence River, out to the mouth, wherever there are Iroquoian sites that, that, that are found, that those are not Mohawk, they're, Iroqu- they're Iroquoian. And I, I, my view is this, Arlene. At what point in history uh, did uh, people start calling us Mohawks? At which point in history did we embrace it as, as our name? Mm-hmm. Okay. And my point there is that at, at all points in our history, um, we were Okwehoi. And so those are our ancestors. Mm-hmm. Those are our people. Um, 
And so we need to be able to have an, an, an agreement. And the problem is, is that is is that it, take Montreal for instance, where we've been uh, negotiating with Montreal uh, for a long while with my predecessor uh, Christine uh, Zachary Diolum. Um, what it, it was it started out w- for archaeology for Ganawage with remains that were found at Peel and Sherbrooke. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at that in that place, oh, it's no chance. There's no way. This has been dug up so many times that there's not going to be anything. And, or, and then, lo and behold, they found remains there. Um, the city of Montreal has in its uh, in its possession in various places a total of eight remains that we know of. Um, now, she entered into a, 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 into a relationship with the city uh, in terms of acknowledging uh, Jojage as uh, as uh, unceded Mohawk territory. They changed their flag. And so on, and then somehow or another, it evolved into this whole thing about um, a process at, at which they set the table in terms of how those things will happen uh, and who will sit at the table. And so it's been very difficult uh, with the city of Montreal, and uh, in terms of well, should uh, kid, uh, you know, I'm not going to mention individual communities, but mm-hmm. d- different people that want to be politically correct, they don't want to say, well, were they Iroquois, were they the Algonquin, what have you, and all. I care about all we care about is their indigenous remains, and I I don't I, I don't have um, uh, a vested interest in the, the, them all being returned to Ganawage. They could be if the city could guarantee, say for instance, the city of Montreal, that a site closest to it um, could be guaranteed protected from any further disturbance, which I don't believe they can. Okay, then but if they could, then let them be there. That's where where they are and protect the site. Uh, so we've had a very difficult time with that. We have another another um, uh, instance, which is the St. Joseph's Oratory, where in the last year they were doing some works there, putting infrastructure in mm-hmm. for water drainage and mm-hmm. so on, and uh, they found remains over there, three remains in one trench that they had dug. And so we were approached directly outside of the process with the city uh, by uh, the Ministry of uh, Culture and Communications for Quebec, which has... The, uh, is the quote-unquote authority over those matters. What I want, okay, which gets to what I've been doing, uh, the what I want is that I want an understanding. And I, I don't want to deal with middlemen. I don't want to deal with uh, people who are not really decision-makers in terms of arriving at, a, at an understanding, at a protocol um, about what happens with human remains. And for that matter, what happens to the other... They, they use the term archaeological resource, mm-hmm. and, it, and they talk about uh, the the uh, role of the Ministry of uh, Culture and Communications is having domain over Quebec heritage. Well, mm-hmm. I say it's not Quebec heritage. If you if you look at and you uncover a site and you say, well, this is indigenous, well, it's not your heritage. <laughs> it, 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 it's not, and you should not have any say about that. Okay, and you need to talk to us. So, um, but there's there's a rationale behind it which goes beyond just. Um, let me let me explain. Uh, one one of the things I'm involved with, uh, and what I hope I can accomplish at the end of the three, the first uh, term, maybe a second term. I do. Uh, I who knows, right? Well, you know, even even little... like you've been through a year and a half, so you have a year and a half left. Really, that's not a lot of time. No, so can really you, imagine, you something... were you were around when it was two years. When you had two-year terms, yeah, we, and, yeah, and, and and I can only imagine what it's like to try and get anything accomplished in two years, especially if you're new to the. Council. It was almost impossible to get something done yeah. in a two-year term. I know there are places that go to, they've gone to four-year terms, um, but regardless, so we have three-year terms. And that was in 2006, I believe they raised it Way to back three then, years. Yeah, it was three years. Yeah, I was still on council you were at still that on time. Council yeah, then. Um, so. Indigenous rights and research is uh, I'm, I'm lead in that portfolio, and that encompasses uh, obviously research. What? Uh, histor- I don't I don't want to interrupt you. Go ahead, go ahead. What does that mean to be the lead? Ah, uh, the lead portfolio. You chief. have the final say. No, I don't. I don't see it that way. I, no, uh, I, I, no, because, I have some, because some, that's the way some people see yeah, it. Yeah, it's not really. You, the, what people have to understand is that is that the portfolio system that exists today is not. Um, I mean, the political system in Kahnawake, as far as council, has changed dramatically really? in yes. 40 years. Yes. Okay. It is not like it was, and, and for that matter, for 50 years when my grandfather was on council, it was completely different. Yeah. Um, so 
right now, uh, the portfolio development has been under a um, process called SOD, uh, which uh, your sister strategic actually works for. Organizational yeah, strate- development. Or, uh, yes, exactly. Yes. And so teams, portfolio teams are developed, and you have subject, subject matter experts. You have the chiefs. Uh, you have um, uh, somebody from OCC. Um, and so you have a lead chief and a secondary chief, but you also have over all the portfolios is the grand chief is still the ex officio for all of the portfolios. Yes. Now, on a, on a, on a day-to-day basis in terms of, say, uh, consultation, which falls under uh, Indigenous Rights and Research, mm-hmm. um, it, it's, a, it's a committee of people. We have our technicians, or we have somebody from legal, we have somebody from the environment that sits on that. You have myself and Tanya Perron, who's my co-chief on, on that. And, and my view is... You, it's you, you are on a lot of uh, a together, few portfolios yeah, with her. That's, yes. that, that's good, like yeah. the consistency, you know? Like not keep changing... Yeah, from the outset, I mean, I when I ran for council, one one of the things that was a key interest for me, Arlene, was um, uh, we had a justice act, uh, but we didn't have an operational court. Mm-hmm. So we had matters that had to do with laws that we passed that ended up in courts outside, mm-hmm. being judged by a whole different legal uh, standard which is wholly weighted on, say, individual rights versus collective, collective. rights. Uh, and and so, the, so I ended up uh, on the portfolio, but I recognize the fact that uh, Tanya has the legal background. Uh, she should be the lead and be a, uh, a secondary on that. And, and also the other the issue that really interested me was that of legislation. Mm-hmm. So I'm the co-chief on there, and she is the lead on those two portfolios. Um, I'm also on education. Um, uh, Harry uh, Rice is the lead on education, and Joe is also. Joe is more than just the ex officio on that file. He is he's because ha- both of we, Harry and I were new to the council, and uh, we all had to. We all that's see that's different now. Is that every chief on council has to be a lead in at least one portfolio? Um, I ended up on a whole bunch of. Uh, different portfolios, uh, but I'm the lead on Indigenous Rights and Research. Mm-hmm. Back to the archaeology thing for just for a second to mm-hmm. tie that up, is that I, originally uh, archaeology was under heritage, and uh, the uh, political advisor, Winona Polson, and I had talked a number of times, and I said, you know, archaeology, yes, you could put it under heritage, but it really more rightly belongs under that whole portfolio of indigenous rights and research. Because what is the rationale? I mean, we're talking about like human remains is, is one aspect of it, okay? And that's on really, you know, for me at least, and, and I believe that's true of all of us, that's on a spiritual level. Yes. Okay? Uh-huh. That's on it. That's on a, but it, it is nonetheless political. Mm-hmm. Because somebody else is making the decisions about those things, and that's just flat out wrong. And those are our people. They're our people. It's our heritage. Now, the other aspect to archaeology is that we're, we are actively uh, in the process of and the business of undoing this St. Lawrence Iroquois theory. You know, I, I, I don't know what this means to a lot of people, say a lot of Cosmogorono. I mean, there are things from day to day that you deal with, right? And it's usually not archaeology or it's not usually uh, consultation. But when the province of Quebec takes a political position, this has impact on our on our seniory uh, claim and any underlying claim underneath that. Mm-hmm. Okay, that we were they were here before us, and they have oh no, it's the Saint Lawrence Iroquois. No, wait a second. What do you base that on? Do you realize that when they look at it, they base it all on pottery shards? So, what's the difference between Saint Lawrence Iroquois and the Iroquois of the Sioux? There is none. That's a name there is that, none. that, that they, they settler came up with people that. came. They stepped yeah. off the boat, yeah. and they decided. And I'm being I'm being a little bit facetious here, but really, if you if you want, you can just you can boil it all down to that. Is somebody decides that they're sovereign over us, and they get to decide all of those things. They base it on things like the this doctrine of discovery, a royal <laughs> proclamation. They have a say, and they determine they have sovereignty over our lives. Yeah, and that's what we've been struggling with now for ever since they got here, but especially in and the last course, 140 years. In that in that way of thinking, this is where all the residential schools came from, the Indian Day schools came from, because they were high, superior to our people. Always we, they thought they we were had, superior. You know what? We had that conversation today. We went to really? the museum in Ruzion, right? Okay. 
and, and uh, Charlie Patton and uh, Ganado, his son, uh, were the uh, faith keepers who attended with us. Mm -hmm. And so they said the words there. And then afterwards, they explained to three of the mayors from the Ruzian, the MRC, uh, the significance of the words that he said. And he did mention, you know, like that particular aspect. When you came and you came off your ships, you you decided that what you had was superior to what we had. That's right. And and that and it, that played that that played its role in the development of who we are in Gahnawage and so on. Um, and in the last in our lifetimes, um, the, the reawakening about us as anything other than a community of and I don't say this in any way to denigrate anybody's faith. I was I mean I came up as a Catholic, so it isn't about that. But at the idea that Gunawagi was known as the, the praying, praying Indians, Indians. Yeah. you know, um, there's more to us than that. We always retained our clans and our affiliation with clans. And mm -hmm. so when the Longhouse came back in... We retained our language. We, well, it's coming back it's, again. Uh, now the younger people are learning fight, it. It's, it's great. To that. It's great. But you're right. So the the um, if we talk about education, you so now residential schools and the, with the Indian Act came in I mean it was the whole goal and it really hasn't changed I, the, the, the goal is to do away with us as distinct people of course it's to you know in our lifetimes in 1961 uh, the prime minister who was who was uh, at that time was John Diefenbaker mm -hmm. really enfranchised us by saying with a pen oh, we're all Canadians and called it citizenship plus mm -hmm. well nobody ever asked me I wasn't born a Canadian citizen nobody asked my mother if that was okay, nobody asked your mother if that was okay. They they wanted to take the savage out of us and put us into the Canadian well, system. Well, they wanted us to be enfranchised. Not mm -hmm. enough people, because enfranchisement has always been in the Indian Act. Of course it has. And and they, and they wanted us to do it willingly, and nobody was that foolish. You were going to say... Oh. Well, sometimes people didn't know what was in the Indian Act. They didn't know those laws. No, it's true. So it's true. if they did something and they were enfranchised, well, well what happened? I was born uh, an Indian. Yeah. Why, why am I not one now? Yeah. That the government decided that. Do you, you you recall there was a period of time when uh, it was actually illegal for Indians to to go hire to a lawyer to yeah. advocate for their even, rights. Even even to go to school. It was to be a lawyer. That's 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 the world. Uh, yeah. That that we were born into. Yeah. Um, and so all of the stuff that we're doing has to do with uh, undoing that and 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 setting our own de our own course, taking the reins of our own destiny. But uh, times are changing. They are. They have. They are. And they and have to. Continue. They have they to have change. They have to. We need to. And on that note, uh, Ross, we'll take a short break, okay? Okay. Okay, and we're back. We were just talking to uh, Radha Hayas, Ross Montour. Uh, Lindsay LeBorn had to leave earlier. And we were talking about the different portfolios that he handles and what his um, future is going to look like in the next year and a half and what he hopes to accomplish. So, Ross, would you like to continue? Yeah, to get back to that, the, the Indigenous Rights and uh, Research portfolio is a large portfolio, and it's a relatively new portfolio. And one of the exercises that we, we, we did uh, um, in, in the fall, we, we um, decided, okay, what does this animal look like? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have put a big board up there in the in the in the in the lounge upstairs, the chief's lounge, mm -hmm. and um, we started putting papers up in one of the different sectors that we cover. Okay, um, what is consultation? What is research? And what is archaeology? Where where does it fit in, and so on? Because the goal there is really, at the end of the day, you know, we have, like we have the Environment uh, Protection Office. That's a unit, and and really in terms of research. Um, the way it's been going on right now is it, it's sort of like you have uh, 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 an office here and you have a technician there. And really, there's so much. You, I, I could show you my phone, which I never had a phone before being on council. <laughs> I always had this story was like if you were out of the house, if I was out of the house, uh, it means I don't want to talk to you on the phone. If you want to talk to me, call me when I'm home. Uh -huh. uh, but. The, the 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 thing is that on any given day I could show you emails coming in um, just like uh, being dump 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 all on consultation stuff but we have it, it, it part of the issue is resource 
Okay, it, and and that hits the financial side, and it has, and it also hits human, the human resource side too, in terms of having, you know, an office that cover, which covers archaeology, which covers consultation files, which covers research files, because they have a lot of work to do, um, and that would be something that I would, I would dearly love to see, uh, in place uh, at the by the end of my term. So we're halfway through. Uh, we, we've met recently again to revisit that. So that they're right now on, on, on Indigenous Rights and Research. It started out there was three chiefs, uh, and now there are four. And those four chiefs are myself as the lead. Uh, you have uh, Mike DeLille, Jr., who is, uh, his particular interest in the file is this uh, scenery of Sault Ste. Louis. Uh, and, and bringing that back up to speed, as you know, it's it's sort of been on the back burner now mm-hmm. for for too long, really. Um, then we have uh, Frank. Well, that's that, that. It's not through our fault. No, absolutely that was, well, not. You know, we have to keep it's, saying that to the to the community because they think, well, council's not doing anything, the scenery is not moving. But you have to understand the political system, and the political system on the white political system. Not, well, you know, ours, all, ours all is... All we, we have to do is think about in the last right. 20 years is how many governments we've had to deal with. And, <coughs> and, and the fact is, is every time you get a change in government, you get a whole change in characters, you get a change in, in attitudes, I and, think, And sometimes. it's a whole history lesson yeah. for us to teach them. This is what it is. And that's and the this feds. This is what we want. That's the of feds. Of course, that's the feds. And then there's the, and then there's the province. And so it, it, it really, and then at the end of the day, you know, you have to, you have to say, you know what? We're gonna even. It doesn't make sense to go forward if what you're going to get is a kick in the can. Okay, uh, you have to end up with something. Well, that, that, I was, that I, is I, meaningful to the community. When I was on council, I was on the seniory file, and we met with the feds, and we met with the feds, and everything seemed it was going our way. And then all of a sudden, no, that's it. So we told them, well, just leave the meeting because we're not going to get anywhere. They almost fell off the chair. Because we said that. Yeah. It's no use meeting with you if you're not going to listen to us. And you're not going to get any soup and sandwich, you know. No, but it, it, and, and, and that really hasn't changed. That seems to be the one factor yeah. that remains yeah. always constant is the view that, um, like, if you talk to them about, say, uh, and when people will say, well, it's, uh, you shouldn't use those. But if you talk to them and say about, uh, okay, we want a relationship, okay, which is more than just... Uh, flowery words, nation to nation, uh, government to government. I would say, well, okay, we, the last year we sent them a, a letter saying, two row means this, okay? Um, it means a, a, a very serious thing That's to That's exactly us. What, the, what the issue was when yeah. we were dealing with it. it, it will they didn't be. understand the two row. How can you not understand it? You stay on your side, we go on our side, we'll work together, but we're not going to jump in your no, ship. No, but... For for me, Arlene, you know the, the 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 reason they always come to that is because it doesn't it doesn't jibe because with they the can. plan. Of course, the plan, which is really to to do away with us as distinct people. They they would rather us all rights. drown. That's right. It's one way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's probably you know what I I have a habit of doing that. No, no, I mean I I think you you can't mince words over that. No, you, know, you it, can't. You know if it, you can't you can't flower it up. Reality is what reality is. Exactly. And sometimes the best way to say that is the most direct. Uh, it may be the least. I have been known politic- to be direct. Yeah. Say it. I, okay. I do, yes. And 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 I, and I think that's what we need, we need to recognize, and I think we do recognize that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a that's a, a major goal. Uh, something to do with um, that was something that we that Harry and I were able to do with education, which is as you know, I mean, it, can, it gets a challenging file. Um, and so we're very different in, from other communities in terms how we we look at the structure of how education should be delivered, the authorities involved, and so on. I, I don't know of another uh, First Nations community, quote-unquote, where um, you have, uh, let's say, something like the Combined Schools Committee, which is parent-driven. Um, then you have the different sectors of the community that, that play into that. And then mm-hmm. you have an education center. And the fact that we insist at least on the schools internally, is that we don't go by the Quebec curriculum standards. 
we, we, we've taken control over that and said, no, no, this is, this is what we're doing. Um, but in particular, the thing that uh, we both kind of, it was uh, in our uh, platforms when we ran, was um, to try and assist uh, Gary Winoru in, in a- achieving a level of secure funding. Um, and so uh, the, actually our first term, the first year, the first three months we were in and we met with uh, the uh, um, people from DISC, as they're now called, uh, Indian Affairs. Uh, and and uh, at, at one point they wanted us to take over uh, both uh, the Indian Way School and I know he said that, that, that won't work. They, they have their own structure and whatever. The issue here is uh, Gardi Winora, the relationship isn't working and they need secure funding. Would you be able to, would you be willing to separate, separate out the funding? Mm-hmm. And the funding that they did separate out, it, it amounted to quite a substantial amount of money, way more than uh, what they had been getting before. Uh, the parents there, people got fatigued by the amount of fundraising that had to be done in order to subsidize the running of the uh, the program. That's right. Yes. So now the next step, the next step that we that Harry and I would love to be able to see is at the end of the three years is that they have a permanent uh, school site on a, on a permanent piece of land, mm-hmm. uh, and and they and they they don't have to worry about politics. They can just worry on preserving our language and culture. And that's and that's a role. And actually, when we met with Indian Affairs, you know, they said, "Well, they said we're we're not experts on education, but meanwhile, they were trying to force the uh, the Quebec standards in over there." And it's um, we took the position that uh, wait a minute, you people are the people that nearly destroyed our language. How are you? Go- how are you? How are you the ones to know what the solution is? Mm-hmm. You okay. Uh, so when you talk about education, this is what we, we uh, worked on, even within council saying, look, it, this is not under, say, this is not, say, education as it exists, even through uh, the Ganawagi Education Center and, and the curriculum standards that they have. This is about language and culture preservation. It needed to be in its own bubble. Um, and so that's that's the, the, the route we've taken. And... Uh, and so I, I, I'm happy that we were able to do that, but there's more to do. There's always more to do, and yeah. it, it's, it's never going to be finished. Uh, you also have, um, you're on the regulatory boards, commissions and labor, uh, gaming, ABC, cannabis control, tobacco board. Particularly. Uh, and and which, which one do you particularly Yeah, particularly, uh, Tanya and I, are, we, it's not a portfolio, it's a file under regulatory boards, mm-hmm. and it's uh, oh, the cannabis, uh, the cannabis yes. uh, file. Yes. So w- what we've been working on is, number one, we, we work to set up the Cannabis Control Board, which is a key element of the, uh, the uh, cannabis law, and also the, um, the Health and Safety Committee mm-hmm. attached to the law also. So the the uh, cannabis control board has been meeting for a number of months now, and and they've been working on the development of the uh, regulations, uh, and so people people who are interested in the industry within the community, either uh, uh, as retail or or a cultivation, um, uh, they they need to wait for those elements to be complete. Uh, in order to be able to proceed with that, the one that we're we're very close to, and we should by the next draft be at at, at completion, is is the is the um, uh, regulation concerning the cultivation of cannabis. Mm-hmm. Um, now tied to that is the issue of, um, and this is where I think most of the 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 angst and pressure in terms of like when can, when do we get a chance to be a part of this is it has to do with the um the dispensary level okay so the questions are still unresolved in terms of how many would that be you know it's one thing to say well as we want to be able to engage in an economic activity but as you know i mean the community the the other side of that was the social side which said well you know we up until the, the government decided to legalize it it was uh, a zero tolerance community. Whether in fact we lived that out is another matter. Mm-hmm. But people were concerned that if there's going to be, if there's going to be uh, the presence of cannabis as a legal substance, and if we are going to be involved, then it has to be it has to be regulated, it has to be safe, and it has to benefit the community. And those are like 
that's a, a, in a way a difficult juggle, but one we're equal to and one that we've been doing. And, and, and we're making progress there. So uh, if it patient, people would just be patient, but don't ex- I, I'm, I'm going to go right out on the limb here since I only got a minute left and say <laughs> it, it won't be it won't be a uh, hundred uh, dispensaries and we have to deal with the province of Quebec. Yes. Uh, and that's the whole thing. We had a meeting yesterday at the main table for QKR, mm-hmm. and we had a discussion about. And uh, I think it, things look fairly positive in terms of being able to reach an understanding and agreement with them. Well, that's good. That's good. So, do you have any any last closing comments, or was that your last comment? I just, you know what, Arlene, I'll I'll just leave it at. You know, I, I I'm happy. Again, any little thing that you can get accomplished. So the return to of the uh, the remains from the Ruzia Museum, the ceremony that took place took place at the Mohawk Trail. We were there, very thankful for the people of Mohawk Trail for for providing that you know mm-hmm. uh, those words and being part of that ceremony. <coughs> and we can put our ancestors to a, to rest. A, a rest that we know won't be disturbed in the future. That's a good thing. Thank you very much, Ross. Um, I hope you come back again. It was a very interesting conversation, and I wish we had more time. Well, I have but to do it sooner. But since we don't, okay, come okay. back again. Next one. So, Nyawa Zewada Humsadat, and sharing your time with me, AJ, and my guests. Up next is the 1 o'clock news with Jeremy Zafron. Have a great weekend. Skana Danu Ona.